Uh, thank you. Yeah, that has touched today. I think um, pretty keen to give you an insight in terms of some of the things we're doing. I think if I look at it in terms of you know the the previous speakers, a lot of great data in terms of how things are being done. It's been really interesting as we've been going through a process of using financing strategies to drive energy efficiency and clean energy and property, mm -hmm. is actually testing what is commercial and testing those boundaries in terms of commerciality and also starting to test some of those barriers, particularly with some of the parties we're dealing with. So I think, you know, the aim I think of this presentation to give you sort of some insights and learnings in terms of what we're seeing that hopefully sort of help in, in this overall discussion. Um, just firstly though, just a bit of an overview of who the Clean Energy Finance Corporation is, for those people who don't know. So we were established by the Federal Government in 2012 as part of the Gillard's Government Broad Ranging Climate Change Initiatives. Uh, we are established and provided with funding of $10 billion, uh, with that funding to be used to pr provide commercial finance, so debt, equity, mezzanine, mezzanine debt, to accelerate clean energy technologies across the Australian economy. So, big mandate. Uh, another entity which was sort of mentioned earlier in the other presentation, ARENA, that you've probably heard of, was established at the same time. Sort of a sister organisation, but very much focused on sort of grant-based uh, funding, uh, whereas we very much look to, to drive a commercial return. If I look at, you know, we actually have a lot of flexibility in terms of the types of financing tools that we use. So, you know, they range from uh, investing in green bonds and supporting parties that issue those, and they're becoming increasingly popular. Doing single project, single building finance. Uh, we're provided financing for corporates to drive sort of energy efficiency and clean energy programs across their, their whole organisation. We've invested in equity funds, uh, both existing and, and new equity funds, on the basis that they set, set sort of very high energy efficiency and clean, clean energy standards. Uh, equipment financing, uh, we do uh, quite a bit of that as well. So sort of broad ranging stuff and you know we're still probably in some ways even though we're five years old or six years old now still exploring and testing you know what is best practice what are we actually getting the best bang for our buck in terms of our financing. Uh, in terms of where we invest as I said it's in some ways it's, it's across the whole economy you know of course if you look at you know a big focus for us is it's all about the decarbonisation challenge and what are those key elements? Well the first one that you know would have been touched on earlier is you know decarbonisation of the grid. So it'd be major supporter of large scale wind and solar projects. Um, waste, bioenergy, which we think is very much an emerging field, but also very much looking at grid solutions, whether that's battery storage on a major scale or commercial scale, also increasingly <coughs> looking at the role of microgrids or even sort of uh, in-house uh, sort of solar and battery solutions to effectively get houses off grid as well, which we think are increasingly becoming economic as well from what we're doing. Uh, energy efficiency, a big focus. I think it was touched on. Uh, you can you know, spend a lot of time in terms of decarbonising the grid, but actually, and I think you know, parties such as Climate Works and I think ASBEC have done a lot of work on this, where, where you actually get a lot of low-hanging fruit and easy wins is, is energy efficiency and demand management as well and look you know I'll touch on some of the insights and learnings and uh, that's pretty much backing up from some of the financings we're doing you know potentially how easy it is to drive some of these benefits. And the final one is sort of transport you know we think that's a key element biofuels, fuel switching, electrification of, of fleets um, you know we can see the trends the urbanisation you know of, of urban vehicles moving to electric vehicles we think that'll that'll hit the mark in the next next five to seven years. That in itself is going to create a really interesting uh, pressure from an electricity perspective in terms of the grid as well. So there's all these dynamics which I know, you know there'll be people in this room that are very much aware of that. Uh, I, you know, this is my background, I head up property, uh, you know, what have we been doing in property? You know, in terms of commitments to date out of that 10 billion, we've committed around 4.8 billion uh, in terms of financing and property uh, it's around 900 million. That's of direct financing related to projects of, you know, circa uh, 3 billion. Uh, the strategy we've been pursuing over the last couple of years is, uh, you know, property is such a broad sector and standards vary so much. Uh, so really working across uh, various sectors to work with partners to really drive, really set those 
leading initiatives, but even more importantly, actually develop a lot of great learnings. Every financing we do, we put a lot of obligations on our partner to actually develop case studies, then issue it to the market and then actually work with key parties in the industry to say, well, this is what you can do, and particularly what you can do commercially as well. So I've sort of listed a few things that we've recently done. Uh, at the end of last year, we announced a $100 million equity commitment in a, a new DEXIS healthcare fund, uh, investing in hospitals, medical centres, aged care. Now, hospitals is a very energy-intensive environment, operating challenges in terms of what you can do with it, but you know, it is one of the most energy-intensive areas of the market. Um, you know, you know this particular investment on the basis that Dexas agreed to, if I compared to uh, Benchmark, uh, designing and operating their businesses to at least f uh, those assets to 45% better than industry practice. Now that's a commercial fund. You know, they've taken a commercial view; they can actually do that. Uh, if I touch on other ones, uh, QI, you know, we're doing a bit of work in retail, working with with QIC in terms of their global. Um, or their national portfolio of assets. Again, retail actually uh, is more energy intensive than office sector uh, in Australia. Um, student accommodation, uh, you know, sort of a bit of a proxy for, for Resi. Um, you know, we've got a partnership with Investor in terms of driving that premium A-grade uh, office approach in terms of net zero carbon buildings. And in housing, uh, we're doing quite a lot of work there. We've actually got a number of live projects we're working on at the moment, which we'll announce over the next... Uh, two to three months, but a recent financing we did last year was with St George Community Housing, not only in terms of designing new energy efficient buildings, uh, but also in terms of refurbishment of their existing portfolio. And, you know, the great thing they found with that, it goes, you know, why do they do it? It goes directly to the affordability for their residents. So they've actually, as they've been testing technology, um, been seeing um, a great acceptance in terms of their residents, in terms of what they're doing. So just, you know, uh, touching on key insights and learnings, look, you know, what are we seeing? Firstly, technology. Uh, technology is only going one way and it's getting better and, and it's getting cheaper and it's getting more efficient. So, and, uh, you know, the projects we've, we've been looking at in financing, you know, the point of, you know, what is commercially achievable? We're regularly seeing that parties are agreeing to design uh, new buildings to between 30 to 50% more energy efficient than the building code at the moment. Um, so we look at technology and I suppose we look at the interaction of the building code and we say there is a national construction code review due in 2019. The states are in charge in terms of looking at residential codes. This actually, you know, given what we're seeing in terms of current available technology driving 30 to 50 per cent better than building code provides great example for, you know, I think people seem to be comfortable in terms of they, they can actually design to that code and it's commercially achievable. Early engagement, I think it was touched on, nearly wrapping up. Uh, you know, in early engagement, a, a lot of the mistakes we find in terms of design happen uh, in energy efficiency happen at design. There's so many basic things you can do in terms of building fabric, insulation and so forth, which have amazing paybacks. Unfortunately, buildings get designed and to look really beautiful, but not necessarily en energy efficient as well. Uh, information, you know, that's a key enabler you know, and uh, I've got something on that a bit later. And finally, it's consumer, and we're sort of testing this at the moment. You know, we look at, say, the government as a great consumer in terms of office buildings, hospitality space and so forth. They can drive the market, but, you know, we do see a, a real need in terms of the retail sector. Uh, and finally, just touching on information, um, this is something we did last year, actually. It was very recent with uh, NDY. We actually issued a report. We actually couldn't find a report in the commercial sector that that actually gave a, a simple, easy to understand, understanding of paybacks on technology. There was lots of little reports on different things, but actually it wasn't one, one report that was user friendly across sector. We actually got the, the major REITs in the market to contribute to it. We were thinking they don't really need it, they know all this stuff. We actually found that they were using it in their business to actually drive further improvement. So it just goes to show how powerful information can be in this sector as well as an enabler. Thank you.